So the importance of physiological overflow is as follows. If I have a shoulder injury or something like this, and I have pain when I get up to, let's say, 90 degrees, I don't want to actually work out through the pain. If I work out through the pain, I can develop an abnormal compensation pattern. Abnormal compensation patterns are actually going to create problems and create pathology down the road. So here's the advantage. If I'm using an isotonic type exercise where the tone is the same, I can come up to 89 degrees and still do that in a pain-free range, but I'm still getting strengthening 15 degrees beyond it. Then I can go above where the painful arc is and work it the same way above that and get the overflow coming down. So I can actually bypass the pain-free portion of the range of motion and still get therapeutic exercise through that entire range of motion. So remember, pain is inhibitory. There's lots of studies that show that if we injure a joint, we injure a muscle, and we contract through that pain, that muscle, one, is going to be inhibited, two, we're going to develop an abnormal compensation pattern. A couple notes on isotonic exercises that we should think about. There's two types of isotonics. There's straight isotonics, where the weight remains the same through the entire range of motion, and variable resistance isotonics. Variable resistance isotonics are the type of isotonics you see when you go into the gym and they have all these machines everywhere. Okay? And what happens is a lot of these machines, particularly Nautilus, they're the people that started it, and then Cybex and a lot of others, have a cam in the machine. And what that does is actually changes the amount of resistance throughout the range of motion. So if I was to do a bicep curl, simply from here to here on a machine, my bicep is going to be weakest at full extension and full flexion. The strength of the bicep is actually going to be strongest in the mid portion. So what happens is the cam adjusts for that. It gives me less resistance at this portion, the most resistance here, and then decreases resistance at the end portion of the range of motion. The idea of this is to help us to prevent injury. The problem with that is that's not physiological. If I pick up a five pound bag, it weighs five pounds at the bottom, at my weakest point in the range of motion, through the middle of my range of motion where I'm strongest, and at the end. So what are some good examples of straight isotonic exercises? Straight weightlifting is an awesome example of that using hand weights and things like that. Those are going to be straight isotonics. A lot of hammer strength machines are straight isotonics. Part of the problem, though, is they tend to isolate a motion, and very seldom do motions occur in pure isolation. Muscles need to work together as a team. That's called synergism. And if I'm just isolating one particular muscle, I mean, how many times do you just do this in a competition and use your bicep? You don't. How many times do you just do this and use your quadricep? Well, unless you kick footballs for a living, you don't do that. Everything needs to work together as a team.